Huh, Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. <laughs> Well, I'll just give it to him. Thanks, Jewel. We know the truth. I was like, oh crap, should I have brought the Magnum? Because the Magnum's much quicker, obviously. Um, but now nah, we did alright. Oops. Oh yeah, we gotta go back and get the crests so we can get into the lab. Let's not forget that. Um, which is fine. I don't mind putting in the work to a YouTube video. Um, I just, uh, some days though, you're just like dead tired and you're editing and you're staring at your computer for like an hour and you're like, come on, man. It's supposed to be just like a quick movie review. Why is it taking so long? All right, the wolf goes here. Go there. All right, I'm gonna check my Twitter see if any of you guys tweeted me. Doesn't look like it though, because normally I get email notifications on Twitter. So it looks like we'll be stopping then. Um, oops. I think Resident Evil always looks at the technology that's at, at their disposal to enhance the horror of their games. So, you know, if you look at Resident Evil, you know, zero, one, two, and three and Code Veronica, it just made sense to do like fixed camera angles because that was kind of what they established in one and they uh, they wanted to stick to that. So that's pretty cool that they did that. Um, and it add to the horror because you couldn't see around the next corner. With four, five, and six, because they were going in a more action oriented way, they, they decided that the horror would come from bigger and scarier monster something you know something super big that you had to fight and you had to use you know more advanced weapons to take them down and that would you know maybe add to the horrors that you're it's like david versus goliath every battle and uh, and so that was kind of the route they took for those so i think yeah seven is like okay what's what's kind of in with horror now and, and what technology is at our disposal now and if you go back and look at resident evil one it, this the original resident evil one was supposed to be in first person that was originally their design Mecca. Um, but they but they couldn't do it because the PlayStation hardware couldn't handle it and it wasn't until they made like Resident Evil Survivor um, where they made a first person game but even that only took like an hour to build it wasn't a very dense game if they made Resident Evil 1 if they made you know with the mansion and everything and the lab and if they did that it would have been like a three disc game and, and Capcom just didn't want to sink that much money into something that they weren't sure about so it so Resident Evil ended up becoming a third person game. But yeah, I mean, so my thoughts to answer your question on Resident Evil 7 is is uh I'm into it. Like uh I I'm excited for it. So far what I've seen I really like and actually I was saying this earlier in my chat um on Thursday of this week uh Capcom is is has invited me up to San Francisco to go to Capcom headquarters, which has been a lifelong dream of mine. 
and I get to play and check out some things of Resident Evil 7 that has not been seen yet. And uh, and I'm super excited. Like I'm I'm so into it. I, I actually, if you check out my YouTube channel, I do some tra uh, trailer reactions, and I did a trailer reaction to um, to the Lantern trailer that just came out for Resident Evil 7. Um, Rate says, I'm a Silent Hill fan, and when Silent Hill gets canceled, hurt me. But seeing RE7 made me happy when I really want to see more of it. And then you also said, holy shit, dude, lucky dude. Yeah, no, I know. I'm, I'm very lucky and I'm very grateful that I get to go. Uh, it's, it's actually because I'm part of the Resident Evil Ambassador Program. So if you're out there and you're a Resident Evil fan and you ha haven't signed up for that, definitely do it because Capcom is going to be going to, I think, like 30 different cities. They're taking this truck around. They're starting in San Francisco. And they're going to take this truck around, and it's going to have Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6, um, like, playable on the truck. And then they're also going to have, like, a merch table, and they're going to be selling plush dolls of the liquor, uh, like a big plush doll. So I'm going to buy one, because I'm sure my dog will chew it apart. Uh, but, yeah, so, so it's a liquor plush. And they're going to be selling cool collectibles, T-shirts, and stuff like that. Um, and they're going to be going to 30 different cities, so make sure you join the Ambassador Program. It's free. You just sign up, and you'll get email notifications about Resident Evil 7 and... Uh, what cities they're going to be going to and also check out the Capcom community at their website they they list in their blog their daily blog um, about that uh, that tour that's going on. it's the 20th anniversary Resident Evil tour all right man it's so much easier to play through as Jill on this too with with her getting extra you know having the two extra item slots I'm gonna try to do what we did the other day which is uh get them to land right on top of each other not gonna happen. Maybe now it will. Come on back, Cletus. There we go. So they're pretty much right on top of each other. I think this will work now. Let's go try it out. I think if we burn one, they might both burn, and that would be sweet. Yeah, look at that. And it's an achievement. Oh, break out the marshmallows. Burn up two zombies at the same time with the lighter. Achievement unlocked. Sweet. I talked about this last night, but I actually really like Jill's story a little bit more than Chris's, even though I like Chris... I mean, I think between the two, Chris might be slightly a character I like a little bit more than, than Jill because I think he's a little bit more like me. He's, um, or maybe more that I'd like to be like. He seems like he internalizes a lot. And uh, Jill, I'm kind of like, like, you know, Jill, Jill talks. Like, you know, she's she tries to work things out and figure things out. And um, that's, I think that's kind of how I actually am. So that's also why I like Jill too. But um, Chris is like kind of that no nonsense kind of dude. Um, and I kind of, uh, guess I kind of wish I was a little bit more like that. And I think down these stairs there's a, a typewriter and I think a, a chest to like drop items off. So let's hope. I mean, if not, I can run back into the house and save somewhere. But I'm pretty sure they set it up so you can save before you fight this battle. Yeah, see, there's a typewriter there. All right, cool. And then there's the box. Great. Um, <laughs> that was way easier than I thought it'd be. All right, Wesker. All right, so what do we got in here? Achievement unlocked, an end to a poor girl's misery. Amen to that, man. This poor kid. Uh, oh, and here's a, a letter from the mom. And uh, and I think in this one you start to see she's starting to lose her mind too. Uh, I wish I could touch her face and hold you in my arms right now. Um, oh, no, maybe not. Nope. This is, she's fully, yeah, November 13th, so she's not dead yet. 
Uh, so she, but they've been separated. They they were all lured to this house, and they were separated and infected separately with different versions of the virus. And then Trevor was just left to die in the mansion, uh, trapped by his own puzzles. All right, let's use this MO disc and free up an inventory slot. Yeah, when, I, when they moved him to the GameCube, I think it was like Resident Evil... They, they signed an exclusive deal with Capcom, and I think it was like everything from Resident Evil Remake to Resident Evil 6 had like exclusivity to the GameCube for a certain amount of time. I think it was like, I don't know, like a couple of years or something like that. But what they would... The plan was that they were going to re-release, you know, all the Resident Evils they could. Um... Like they made well, they made Resident Evil Zero, which was originally a Nintendo 64 game, and they pretty much scrapped it and then, um, you know, made it made a, a version like this with these kind of graphics um, after the remake came out. So that was pretty cool that they did that. Um, and and then, but they ported Resident Evil Two, which I think they ported the, the Nintendo 64 version, so it had like the extra files, I think. I may be remembering that wrong. Um, and then they, you know, made Nemesis and then Code Veronica. So it was cool to have them all on one system and, and physical copies of them as well. And then I just would play them all the time. Oh, snap. Oops. Face of that shot. I feel like there used to be so much more in these rooms when you, uh... In the original version, um, it feels like there's almost like next to nothing in here. Yeah. Try to take a swing at me, son. Suck shotgun shell. Yeah, like I feel like this room is literally, it's just like, oh, look at this cooperating room. Like, we operate in here. There's blood on the sheets. It's like, cool. Is, can there be some shotgun shells in here, too? All right. I do have an MO disc. What are you talking about? I got two of them. Is this guy going to get up? Because now would be a bad time. <laughs> as I as I fill this thing with nitrous, it would not be good for him to get up. Yeah, beating Resident Evil 6 that many times is... I, I commend you. Um, I think I've only beat it... When it first came out, I had it on the Xbox 360. And I beat it... Um, I think, like, well, I mean, I guess there's the f four different scenarios. So I beat each of them, like, maybe two or three times. M maybe two. Maybe just two. I don't think three. Uh, and then when I bought it, when it was re-released this year, I think that was my actual third playthrough of the games. So, and that's just because I really didn't get into the storyline too much. Oh, this is not the way I want to go. Little C says five and six I beat the most. You know, it's five when it first came out. I had some complaints about it, but overall that game grew on me. I actually kind of dig five because I, I like Sheva and Josh as new like additions to the universe. I liked Chris kind of, you know, becoming um, part of this organization like BSAA with Jill and them taking the fight to Umbrella and then traveling the world, you know, looking for biohazard outbreaks and and you know saving people and saving lives i just think that was a cool evolution for their characters and a cool direction to take them in really just making them heroes and so i did actually five started to grow on me plus you get a lot of closure in five of like plot threads that were left open from code veronica and you know and this game one so it felt like a it felt like a nice send-off to those characters actually to the point to where when when they announced six before i even knew which characters were in the game i was kind of hoping 
that it would be new characters that I was kind of hoping they wouldn't bring Chris back or Jill back and stuff. I was, I kind of thought five was a nice cap to that story that would, that began in Resident Evil one. And I was thinking that if anything, maybe they'd bring Leon back and, and Ada and conclude that story, which they kind of do, but they still wedged Chris in the, in the, um, in the new team, you know, that he's a part of. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Rant over. All right, that in there. Now we got to go kill that last chimera. And then start up the elevator. Whoa, I didn't see that before, I don't think. Not that I'm using these things. I'm gonna have like 20 defensive weapons when we finish this game. But 5, I, I just actually played 5 recently. Um, I bought it when they re-released it, and I played a little bit of it that first week. But then, uh, I think like two weeks ago, it was like, or three weeks ago, did it in Resident Evil 6 like when you're Leon you take a plane to China it crash lands you somehow survive and uh, and then as you get out of the plane Sherry Birkins right there like of all people there's uh, like millions of Chinese people and the first people you run into is American Sherry Birkin after you crash it, I'm, it's just, it's so lazy, the storytelling in 6. It's so lazy. It just feels like the director of that game wanted to make a different game. It was like he wanted to make Live Free or Die Hard the game, you know, where it was like, it's like someone, you know, John McClane's running and there's an explosion and the floor falls out from under him and then he lands in the sewer, but the sewer is exactly where he needs to go to progress the story. Like, that's everything in Resident Evil 6. Every story is, oh, this building fell apart or this tunnel exists or this just... If for convenience sake, not nothing organic is happening in six. Um, and six actually starts off when you play as Leon, it starts off on a really interesting story note, which is you have to shoot the president right, like right in the face. He's turning it. He's turned to a zombie and you have to kill him immediately. Um, that is dramatic. That is a great way to start a story. Um, especially for the hero of your story. But, uh, yeah, it's such a bust that game. I think you can refill like two or three times. Um, like completely refill two or three times. So that's good. It's good we came down here with, with uh, two doses in the in the flask already. Um, and, and again, once again, I'm, I'm probably saying this to ad nauseum, but thank you guys for watching my stream and for hanging out with me tonight, keeping me company while we're fighting all these zombies and these monsters. I get so scared. This room's pretty cool. They updated a lot of stuff in it. Um, I'm not even going to bother with this puzzle, I don't think. Well, you know what? I'll just do it, because why not? Um, yeah, so it's, if I'm not mistaken, it goes colon, esophagus, liver, lungs, or, or lungs, liver. It spells the word cell, uh, C-E-L-L. -L. Um, and that'll be a password to something. But what you got to do is you got to put, the, uh, put them in order. So, um, so we got to examine these real quick and you'll see like, this is gay, uh, Gail Holland. Uh, so she'll probably go last cause we're going alphabetically and this is a uh, Clark David. So it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Um, so we'll use that there and then you put Gail's here. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I didn't mean to do it again. Okay. 
So we got researcher's letter. So here it is, June 8th, 1998. Uh, so this, just a month before our arrival. So that's uh, how long people pretty much survived was into the month of June. After the outbreak on May 11th, that's how long it took to slowly infect everyone, spread everything, and all the monsters getting out. Um, he says, my dearest Ada, by the time you read this letter, I will no longer be the person you once knew. The results of my test came out today, and I, as, I, as I suspect, suspected, it came out positive. I feel like I'm teetering on the edge of reason. Just thinking about my impending doom, I would give anything not to have become one of them. So poor John here has uh, has been infected, and he is uh, working for the Umbrella Corporation. I feel like he has a little bit of a conscience about you know things like he's not a total, it doesn't sound like a total monster. He sounds like he has some sympathy. He was in love with this woman named Ada, and uh, so it makes me wonder what John looked like, because Ada's pretty hot. Uh, so uh, John, if he's like a, a, a squirmy little lab dude, um, I, although they do kind of explain Ada wasn't really ever in love with John so much. It was more of a cover story. She was undercover um, to infiltrate Umbrella uh, for uh, you know an outside party trying to learn more about them. So she's kind of a spy. So that's kind of ultimately the reason that they were together. But uh, but John goes on to talk about the self-destruct sequence. So that way, just downloading the knowledge um, to, uh, to you know to the gamer that there, that is an option to, that you're gonna have to might have to blow up this this facility. Um, and then he says using your uh, my name and your name as the password. So uh, right now we don't know what his name is until you get to the end of the letter. You see John and he says thank you Ada. So we're gonna have to log in somewhere and use John and Ada. And then we come over here, press this light, and you'll see um, the colon, the esophagus, and the liver and lungs all light up on here. It tells you the order to go in. Like I said, I believe it spells the word cell, so we're going to go with that for now. But so, John, so there was, in one of the um, magazines, there was a Resident Evil magazine came out first. It was a comic books, but just in a magazine format. It was a big size. It was released by Wildstorm Comics. And uh, who at that time was owned by Jim Lee, very famous comic book artist, Jim Lee, and uh, and and he even did one of the two of the covers. I think he did the f cover of the first issue, and then I think issue three, where uh, where it was just like a shot of Claire Redfield, like a profile shot of Claire Redfield holding um, the submachine gun, which is like a secret weapon you unlocked in the game. So it's pretty cool, um, and the magazines each had sh the, each one had short stories in them, and they like the first one had a short story about like the events of the first video game, and the second issue had you know the second video game. Those were the only two games out at the time, uh, so they didn't really go beyond that. Ooh, I do need magnum rounds. Let's see what else is in here first, though. Um, and, and and so in the the first book there was a short story about John, and it actually shows John. Um, oh, this is a, a V act uh, formula talking about the um, progression and creation of the Crimson Head zombies, which is that thing they buried in the casket that I put the four masks on and freed, and it came after me. Um, all right, so our login we're gonna do John. Um, and then his password's Ada. So John, there was a short story about John, like narrated by him, which is pretty cool. And it was a, uh, you get to, I know it's not really canon, technically, the comics weren't really canon, but uh, but it was really neat to see someone come up with the idea of, hey, let's tell the story of John. And, uh, and it showed him, um, oh, here's where we enter the word cell. So if you if you don't have that password right away, like if you didn't guess that puzzle, you wouldn't unlock this room right away until you guess that puzzle. But uh, just logging in, you can unlock B3 just with Ada's password. Well, using the password of Ada, you can at least unlock those doors. So yeah. Um, but John, he seemed like a pretty interesting guy in that in that short story, and it showed him. He was kind of like a. Uh, uh, not, not analytics. I wouldn't say that's the right word. Um, check out these zombies or these, whatever these are. This she kind of looks right there. She kind of looks like Code Veronica a little bit. Um, it's pretty cool, creepy looking. Um, all right, so we got enough. We we had enough spots so we can go pick up those uh, magnum bullets on the way out. 
but John would, he was like, you know, overseeing a lot of the projects and just writing down the data, like almost the combat data, kind of the stuff that um, our trader is after. Again, trying not to spoil uh, for people on my YouTube channel that are going to watch this and and don't know the, the twists in the in this game. They do, we have learned that there is a trader on the team, we just don't know who it is yet.